In the prehistoric skies of what is now North America, a shadow once glided effortlessly across the earth. A shadow so vast, it would send herds of smaller dinosaurs scattering. This wasn't the silhouette of a bird, nor was it a dragon from myth. It was Quetzalcoatlus Northropi, the largest flying creature to have ever lived. With a wingspan that could rival a small airplane and a height comparable to a giraffe, this pterosaur was a creature that defied expectations, dominating not only the skies, but also the land it walked upon. Named after the Aztec god Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent, Quetzalcoatl bore no feathers but certainly lived up to the majesty and terror of its namesake. It was not a dinosaur, but a pterosaur, part of the Asdarkid family. These were known for their long necks, elongated beaks, and adaptations for a life that balanced between earth and sky. These were not sluggish gliders or clumsy flyers. No, Quetzalcoatl was a marvel of evolution, a creature built for soaring, stalking, and surviving in a world of giants. Its wingspan stretched between 33 and 36 feet, longer than a city bus or most modern fighter jets. When it stood upright on the ground, it could reach a height of up to 16 feet, towering over most animals in its ecosystem. Despite this tremendous size, it was surprisingly light for a creature of its dimensions. With a body weight estimated between 200 to 250 kilograms, or about 440 to 550 pounds, its frame was built like a high-performance aircraft, lightweight, aerodynamic, and efficient. Quetzalcoatlus lived during the late Cretaceous period, approximately 70 to 66 million years ago, in the last days before the cataclysmic asteroid strike that wiped out three quarters of life on Earth. Its remains were discovered in the Javelina Formation of Texas, a fossil-rich deposit that paints a vivid picture of a semi-arid inland environment crisscrossed by rivers and scattered with uplands. This terrain wasn't lush jungle, but a dry, open landscape. It was the perfect stage for a sky titan to roam, both above and across the ground, and roam it did. Unlike the common image of pterosaurs skimming over oceans for fish, Quetzalcoatlus likely preferred the dry interior. Its body was built not just for flight, but also for terrestrial dominance. When grounded, it walked on all fours, its wings folding back like great sails, while its long, stilt-like legs carried it with a powerful, stalking stride. Its neck stretched forward, balanced like a crane's, while its head, long, narrow, and ending in a sharp, toothless beak, searched the land for prey. What did this giant feed on? That has been the subject of much debate, but most paleontologists now believe Quetzalcoatlus was a terrestrial hunter rather than a fish catcher. It likely preyed upon small vertebrates, including tiny dinosaurs, juvenile ceratopsians, lizards, or even early mammals. With its lightning-fast strikes and spear-like beak, it could stab, grab, and swallow prey whole in a single, fluid movement. It may also have scavenged when the opportunity presented itself, using its tall stature to spot carcasses across the plains. But even with all its size and strength, it was no reckless predator. Quetzalcoatlus was patient and calculating. Its long limbs and elevated head gave it superior visibility, while its quiet, deliberate movements allowed it to close in on unsuspecting prey. Unlike predators that relied on brute force, this pterosaur likely depended on stealth and speed. It didn't chase. It ambushed. And when it moved, it did so with an eerie grace. Despite its terrifying capabilities, Quetzalcoatlus may have led a relatively solitary life. There is little fossil evidence to suggest it moved in large groups, although small flocks or seasonal gatherings during mating periods are not out of the question. Roosting would have been a challenge for such a large flyer, but high ground, such as cliffs or plateaus, would have offered safety and a launch pad. Launching in a flight was no small feat for such a massive animal. It couldn't simply flap and take off like a sparrow. Instead, it likely used a powerful quadrupedal launch technique, pushing off the ground with both its forelimbs and hind limbs in a coordinated burst of energy, much like modern bats. Once airborne, it could stay aloft for hours, riding thermal currents and gliding long distances with minimal effort. Its flight was more than just functional. It was masterful. With a vast wingspan and light skeletal frame, it could reach estimated speeds of up to 80 miles per hour, rivaling many modern birds of prey. It didn't flap endlessly, 
as that would consume too much energy. Instead, it soared, and in the open skies of the late Cretaceous, there was plenty of room to glide. Back on land, Quetzalcoatlus had few natural predators once it reached adulthood. Its size alone made it a daunting opponent, and its ability to take flight offered a crucial escape route. However, juveniles would have been far more vulnerable. It is likely that baby Quetzalcoatlus grew rapidly and may have been capable of flight soon after hatching. This quick adaptation would have been vital in a world filled with dangers, from hungry theropods like Tyrannosaurus rex to rival pterosaurs. Reproduction and nesting habits remain largely speculative, but most researchers believe they nested on dry uplands, where eggs could be buried in soft soil or protected in nests. Adult pterosaurs may have offered some level of parental care, guarding their young during the early, vulnerable stages. The long necks and sharp beaks of adult Quetzalcoatlus would have made effective deterrence against egg-stealing scavengers. In terms of lifespan, Quetzalcoatlus probably lived between 20 to 30 years, assuming it survived past its fragile juvenile stage. Over those decades, it would have covered vast territories, rising above the canopies, drifting over plains, hunting silently through the dry heat of Cretaceous afternoons. It would have seen the world from a vantage point no other land predator could claim, watching the great herds below, scanning the horizon, always ready to strike or soar. Its extinction, like that of many giants of its era, came swiftly. Around 66 million years ago, an asteroid estimated to be six miles wide struck what is now the Yucatan Peninsula. The impact released energy equivalent to billions of atomic bombs, triggering fires, earthquakes, tsunamis, and a nuclear winter that darkened the skies and cooled the earth. Plants died, food chains collapsed, and the great flyers of the Cretaceous skies, including Quetzalcoatlus, vanished into history. But its legacy remains. The fossil record has given us fragments, bones so delicate and hollow they were once thought impossible to preserve. Yet from these bones, scientists have reconstructed not only the body, but also the story of one of Earth's greatest flyers. Museums around the world now display life-sized reconstructions of Quetzalcoatlus, often suspended from ceilings like angels of a forgotten era. Artists and filmmakers have imagined it in flight, perched on rocky cliffs, or stalking prey beneath a blazing Cretaceous sun. More than just a curiosity, Quetzalcoatlus Northropi represents the outer limits of what evolution achieved in powered flight. No modern bird, not even the albatross or the condor, comes close in size or wingspan. And while bats are extraordinary flyers in their own right, they are mere whispers compared to the thunderous presence this creature would have commanded. To its prey, it was an airborne nightmare, silent and sudden. To rival predators, it was a competitor to avoid. And to us, looking back across the abyss of time, it is a symbol, a testament to nature's creativity and the power of imagination turned into scientific pursuit. One cannot help but wonder what it must have looked like to see a fully grown Quetzalcoatlus rise into the air. The ground would tremble as it pushed off. Wings snapped open like sails. A whoosh of air, a rush of shadow, then silence, as the giant caught the thermals and drifted higher, vanishing into the heavens. In that moment, it wasn't just a creature. It was a force, a god of the sky in all but name. And perhaps, in the myth of Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent who ruled wind and sky, the ancient peoples of Mesoamerica remembered something more than legend. Perhaps, buried in the deepest parts of human memory, there remains the awe of ancestors who once looked up and saw a giant in the sky, gliding silently across a world that no longer exists. That giant was Quetzalcoatlus Northropi, and though it is gone, its story continues to soar.